Hey, what's going on everyone? It is me, Kelvin, aka I Love My Flygon, and today I am going to be doing an overview of the third season of the BGL and how I did. As you can say, the playoffs are here, and long story short, you can see that I got second, which, you know what, I'll take, but I still thought it would be kind of nice to, like, um, go over the entire season, see how I did, and <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much the purpose of this video, just to review the entire season of the BGL Season 3 for me, how I did, how I could have improved on certain things, and how this will affect my performance in other draft leagues in the future. So yeah, let's get into this. Alright, so as you can see here, we have all my teams from the entirety of the BJL. Now, this video is probably going to be pretty long, I'll be honest with you. But this is kind of just me ranting about how I did. And even if you don't watch the entirety of the video, I that's okay with me. I, I'm just more doing this for myself, just as an overview. And I'm deciding to upload this because, you know, why not? It'd make a cool video. Anyways, this which this was my original draft for the BJL Season 3. There was Zygarde, which was my Tier 1, Cresselia, which was my Tier 3, 2, Roserade was my Tier 3, Chandelure is my other Tier 3, Arachmon is my Tier 4, Rotom Frost, which was originally Cryogonal, was my Tier 5. Then, for my four Freemons, um, I had Trakion as my first free pick, Sylveon as my second free pick, Spiritomb as my third free t free, free pick, and Mudsdale as my fourth free pick. Keep in mind, a tier 1 costs 180 points, tier 2 costs 120, tier 3 costs 100, tier 4 costs, I'd like to say 60, and then tier 5's cost 40. I could be wrong, but I think that's how it went. <laughs> And you had a total of 400 points, I believe. So, if I wanted to get a tier 1, this is how I had to go. But if I went on a tier 1 and a tier 2, I had to get two tier 5s in order to, like, stay within my budget. And I'm, I'm okay with this. You know, I was very okay with this. And then, as my Mega, I had Mega Scissor. And oh my god, was Mega Scissor amazing. I loved using it every single time I could bring it. And I just loved it. Like... I was very skeptical about my draft at first, especially after the first week, which we'll get into. But as but as it continued, it just seemed like I was getting more and more comfortable with my draft, and I was very happy with it. And I still am very happy with it. I probably wouldn't make very many changes, and I remember not liking Cresselia at all at first, but as the season continued, I just... Cresselia was such a good mod as the season continued, like it really just shut down a lot of mods, and I loved it for that. <laughs> Zygarde, I didn't get to use Zygarde as much as I would have liked to, and I don't think Zygarde is as good as people claim it to be. Like, I really do support that. Like, Zygarde's amazing, don't get me wrong, but it's not as overpowered as people make it out to be. Maybe it's because of how paranoid I was to use it at times because of his quad weakness to ice and how certain other mon it just didn't perform well against certain other mons but it was definitely a good mon either way and I was happy that I got it <clears throat> uh Roserade Roserade was pretty good honestly um there were certain instances where it just applied so much pressure with how much um offense it could provide it was great it was a great spike user great toxic spike user even though i never got to use toxic spikes it was just a good mod overall and then we have chandelure i didn't get to use chandelure that much i'll be honest i didn't get to use it that much <laughs> but it was very useful and one week i brought like a really neat strategy i brought haze chandelure for a Vol volcarona and it actually worked <laughs> so i was very happy about that uh Anyways, uh, Araquanid. I absolutely loved Araquanid, and I always love using Araquanid in, uh, draft for some reason. Like, 
even though this is only my second draft, and the first draft I didn't even pick a Raccoonid, the first draft LEGO I've ever been into, I didn't even pick a Raccoonid. I just love a Raccoonid so much, and I love what it can provide. I just love webs, you know? And then Rotom Frost. So originally I had Cryogonal, but I didn't like Cryogonal. Like, it just didn't provide much. All it did was, like, defog, and it wasn't that strong. All it had was, like, Decent special attack, good speed, and rapid spin, and that was it. That was pretty much just it. So I wanted something a little more, which is why I got Rotom Frost, which, in my opinion, was better than Cryogonal. It wasn't as fast, but it did have a lot more, a bit more rolls to serve, you know? And it still had that defog, so I was very happy about that. And I'm glad I brought it, because, like, it helped me in a number of situations. Then we move on to here. Tracheon was amazing. I'd like to argue that it was my best mon, and it was the best mon in my draft. And for good reason, too. It's so overwhelmingly powerful, and you can run it as a lot of things. You can run it as Band, Scarf, Double Dance, Stealth Rock Lead. It's just. I really loved using it. I really loved using it. I usually have a tendency of not bringing Stealth Rock on Terrakion. That's because I like bringing three moves in Sword Dance with my Terrakion. Or like three moves in Rock Polish or like two moves in SD Rock Polish. Just depending on like the matchup, you know. But I will bring Stealth Rock sometimes on Terrakion. I would bring um, Stealth Rock sometimes on Terrakion. Then we had Sylveon, which I honestly really liked. I was surprised at how useful Sylveon was throughout the season. I think I brought her for most of my matches, which is very surprising to me. But she did provide a lot. I loved her. I loved how she could be used offensively. Though I usually used her for my defensive role, whether that was a heal beller, wish support. I don't think I ever used her as like a fully offensive mon. But even then, she had enough special attack and a good enough stab to still do a lot of damage. My boy Spirit Tomb. I only brought him once during the entire season, and the one time I did, he did pretty alright, honestly. And I wish I was able to use him more, because he does have a lot of rolls. The one thing that was really holding him back was the lack of recovery, but if he did have some sort of recovery, then I'm pretty sure I would have used him more. But other than that, he was okay. He wasn't great, but he was okay. Uh, same case could be used for Mudsteel. Mudsteel was okay. I brought him like twice. And he was okay the times I did bring him. He did have a role. I think I just got him because I needed a good ground type other than uh, Zygird and I wanted a Stealth Rocker. And that wasn't tracking on, so I just brought Mudsteel. I did like him. I did like having him on my team, but I don't know. He was just okay. And then Mega Scizor was is also another debatable best Pokemon on my team because oh my god was it amazing. It had so much offensive potential, had so much defensive potential. Like I ran so many sets with this thing. Uh, I ran an SD Roost set one week, I ran a Defog Roost set another week, I brought like Defog 3 attacks. Uh, Sword Dance 3 attacks. It's just Roost 3 attacks, I remember bringing that. It had a lot of rolls, and I always messed around with the DFEs because it just had really good um, offensive and defensive stats. I, I, I could not complain about this mod at all. It was just absolutely amazing this season, and I'm so glad I grabbed it. And he's. Scissor and Mega Scissor are probably my two favorites for Draft League now. Just seeing how well Scissor did well for me. Will I use Scissor or Mega Scissor in my next draft? Mm, I'm not sure, because I, I like going for something new, you know? But, I don't know, we'll just have to wait and see. But yeah, that was overall my draft, and that's how I felt about the Pokemons I had. I really liked my draft, honestly. The only Pokemons I could really complain about was not using Zygarde that much, but I think that was more on me than anyone else. Um, Spirit Tomb and Mudsteel being eh, but that's what I expected them to be. 
other than that, everyone else was just pretty good. So, going into that, we have the eight weeks of the seven weeks, sorry, seven weeks of the season and the playoffs, and I will go over those relatively quickly. I'll just breeze by them and tell you what happened. So yeah, let's go here. Let's go to the leaderboard. Not leaderboard, sorry, schedule. So the first week was against Manny, and I got 6 0 There wasn't really much to be said about that match. Like I misplayed a lot, and I don't, I don't relatively do well against Stall. I mean, especially at that time, because like I, I didn't know what Manny's playstyle would be, and I just got the team. Though I'm not making up any excuses. He did beat my ass, and I did lose pretty hard to him and he did make all the correct plays while I made a lot of misplays and I wish I could have redone that match if I could but I kind of got to we'll, we'll get to that later <laughs> but yeah the what I really liked about this match was my Mega Scizor and my Terrakion like I like my, my Mega Scizor and my Sylve Sylveon and then Roserade I kind of liked all my mods except for this one I kind of just slapped Cryagonal on there for like no reason whatsoever without thinking about it because I didn't know what else to bring so I just brought Specs Cryagonal which did absolutely nothing because it just got shipped down by the Mega Lottie. Um, but other than that, I like the Zygarde set though Registeel kind of blocked it ironically with the uh, Curse Registeel. Um, I liked Roserade, though if I could change the item, I would, but Synthesis was a good bring on it. I loved the support Sylveon bring. I loved the offensive potential Trakion had. Same with Mega Scizor. I just, I could have used them better, but I didn't, and that was kind of my fault. And I learned, I also learned to like, take more time with team building, because I built that team in the span of 30 minutes with uh, my friend Jin. And after that, I kind of realized that I should like, not only team build more by myself, like a bit more by myself, instead of just relying on one player team building for me. Like I should, like some help would be needed, but like I, it's my sets and whatever I'm comfortable with, I should run. Um, as long as I think it's effective against the opposing team. But I should take more time with it, you know? And that's what I learned. And then week two, I went up against Winder, right? And I beat him 3-0. This helped me gain a lot of confidence after the first week, because before this, um, because okay, rewind. Before this, I was in uh, an LC um, draft league. I was a replacement for someone, and the league like only lasted for so long before kind of dying. Um. But me and Winder did battle in that, and he beat me 1-0. And then in the ABL, which is the first ever league I participated in, he beat me, I think, 2-0? No, 4-0, yeah. He beat me 4-0, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> and... Yeah, I, I usually just had a history of, like, always losing to Winder in draft. Winder in draft. So this was, like... I wanted to try and get some redemption, and I did. And not only that, but I was extremely comfortable with my team. Like, if you want to see the match, I'll try and put it in the link in the description below. Um, because Winder did upload it to his YouTube channel, though I'll warn you, the quality is pretty bad. <laughs> Five FPS. But the main reason why I was so comfortable with this match was because of Cress. I absolutely loved Cress this match, and I loved the spread I gave her. Like, once I got a few Calm Minds up, I kind of just beat his entire team with the combination of Psychic and Shadow Ball. Um, and that's kind of what happened at the end of the match. I think his last mods were like Slow King, Keldeo, and Golurk. And at that point, he didn't have anything for Cresselia except for Golurk. But even then, I, I was able to live... I, I could have made it a 4-0, because Cresselia did a live a hit from Golurk, and at, at that point I think I was already at plus 2 special attack, so I could have killed the Golurk with Shadow Ball. <laughs> Especially um, with um, the Golurk being a more offensive set. But it did 
what it was supposed to do at the end, and I loved it. Mega Scizor was very, very good. Like, it just cleaned off all of his threats. Like, it cleaned off Coco, it cleaned off, um, cleaned off Coco, cleaned off Golo. It chipped a lot of his mons down. It was very useful. And <laughs> this was when I was starting to realize how good Mega Scissor was. Same with Cresselia. Drakion, he didn't do too much, if I remember. He didn't do that much because he didn't get the chance to. But I did. He was still there providing a lot of offensive capability. Um, with Araquanid, I loved Araquanid this match because of the way I played him. So, like, I think this was around turn three or four. Um, it was my Araquanid versus his Shaman. So he swapped out his Shaman into his Mega Aerodactyl, but I predicted that liquidation the Mega Aerodactyl and it was dead. And then he sent in Coco the next turn. He tried to predict the incoming, I think, Mudsdale and HP Ice, but I stayed in with my Requinid because I felt like at that point I didn't need it. And I liquidation putting a nice, like, what, 75% on the top of Coco. And at that point, the entire, um,. The entire momentum of the match just swung towards my favor and never left my favor. Like, that's kind of what decided the match. Even though it was like very early on, because after that he couldn't really get a solid footing on while I just had a lot of momentum on my side. And I loved Arachnid for that, it was awesome. Um, <clears throat> Spirit Tomb. Spirit Tomb was mainly there to like will o um, some key threats. Or, and then like try and toxic chip down other threats um it was my main switch into Slowking, and Slowking couldn't really do much to it so it was always forced to switch out and it did chip down shaman enough to where it actually did pick off shaman though at the cost of spirit tomb dying itself but i was very happy with that and then mudsdale was there to primarily deal with mega Aerodactyl and coco because coco could not deal with mudsdale um if it was av especially if it was av um, that was the main reason why I brought it, and it did it. It did its job. It really did do its job. Um, though it did die to like the combination of Golurk, Shadow Punch plus Ice Punch. But other than that, it was okay. And I really liked this match because I performed really well in it, and this kind of just gave me confidence going into the rest of the league. So then, the week. Three match was against Mod, where I three owed him, three owed him as well. Um, you're gonna see that with just, there's a lot of rock type moves on this uh, squad, and that was mainly due to the Volcarona. I hated Volcarona; it messed up my team hard. If it had the combination of flamethrower, <coughs> my bad. Flamethrower, Bug Buzz, and Giga Drain. Like, it could just sweep my entire team if it had that combination. Which is why I brought um, HP of Rock Rose Ray, just in case, like, he thought I wouldn't stay in, which obviously I probably wouldn't. Haze <laughs> Channel Lore, which actually worked. Um, Scissor obviously lost to it. Terrakion, Araquanid, naturally dealt with it. So if we got a Quiver Dance up, that's when things would start getting bad. And Sylveon with HP Rock did manage to deal with it, though if he was a Roost set, then he would have most likely beaten it. <clears throat> but yeah, Sylveon did um, beat the Volcarona with the HP Rock set, and I was very happy with that. Um, I'm trying to remember what else happened in the match. Uh, Chandelure knocked out the Tyrant Trim with Grassinium Z. I brought Defog on Mega Scissor because I didn't like rocks against my team, like at all. Because it just hurt mons like Chandelure and Arachnid too much, mons that I thought I needed. It just chipped on my team too much and I needed a Defogger. So I brought like a defensive set with Defog, Bullet Punch, U Turn, Roost. Um, let me see. Let me click on the match real quick. Because <clears throat> I don't remember exactly what happened in the match. Maybe this will bring back some memories.
Yeah, we should still be on. <laughs> yeah, see, this is where I beat um, the Volcarona with HP Rock. Yeet. That thing was gone. Metagross was honestly really scary. If it carried Fire Punch, then it was just like super scary to me. <clears throat> I, I, I should have defogged here. Yeah, I, sh I did defog. Um, Seismitoad was also somewhat annoying. And Sludge Bomb really hurt the Torn. Like, that was just amazing getting a crit on it. I didn't need a Raquinid. <laughs> like, I really didn't. So, I thought sucking it would be the best idea. This Gyarados was also, like, the biggest pain in the ass ever. Like, I hated that. I hated the Gyarados. <laughs> also, we didn't know this at the time. But, we didn't know this at the time. But... You were supposed to Mega first turn, so this was kind of against the rules. <laughs> kind of against the rules. He missed the Ice Fang, which is absolutely huge. Especially considering what percent my Sylveon was at. And after that, I'm pretty sure I just picked it off with the... Oh no, never mind, I just naturally died to poison. Yeah, and then after that... Yep. <laughs> I forgot he said that. Uh, yep, okay. So that was like, kind of the match, or like a brief overview of the match. I did very well in it. He had a lot of scary setup mon threats. But I'm very happy with how I did. And... I will admit, I did get lucky, but... I did win the match. And that's all I needed. Though either way, I'm pretty sure I still would have won the match. Because I did still have that scissor in the back. <laughs> um, let's just exit server real quick. Now we had week 4 against Sal, I believe. Yeah, and it was a 2-0. Now, the main mod that scared me in Sal's team was the... If I could remember, it was the Mega Pidgeot. Let me go back to his team real quick. Uh, my bad. <laughs> yeah. It was the Mega Pidgeot that really scared me. <laughs> and the Clefable also scared me. But not as much. <laughs> With Zygarde, um... <clears throat> Zygarde was, like, was good to try and be my prime, uh, way of, like, sweeping his team. Because after like two Dragon Dances, I kind of just won, especially with like Steel EMZ. <laughs> uh, Ductrio was also very scary. I hated Ductrio against my team. That's why I ran Shookaberry Track, just in case he did bring it. Which he didn't end up bringing the Ductrio, which I was very surprised about. And I was also very happy about and relieved. I remember he made a misplay early on. I think he switched in the Mega Pidgeot to like... Either a Hyper Voice on Sylveon, or a Liquidation from the Araquanid. By the way, that was like kind of huge for me. <clears throat> and with Mega Scizor, um, I had Superpower mainly for the Incineroar. And I hated Incineroar against my team. I really just hated it. <clears throat> Though I still did have di ways of dealing with it. It was a very clean match, like, it was a very clean match, and me style commented on that afterwards, about how clean the match was, that there weren't any really hacks, and it was kind of just like, made the best man win, and I did end up winning that match, which I was very happy about. And at this point, I had a three win streak, which was I was very happy about, like, I didn't expect to do this well, after, especially after the first week. But yeah, this match went really well i forgot what i ran hp oh yeah the hp ground was for the incineroar which did actually end up knocking out the incineroar i think it was like around 60 50 percent and i did end up knocking out the incineroar with expert bolt hp ground which i was very happy about good thing i ran modest <laughs> he also brings scarf latios if i remember correctly did he have latios was it latios or latios latios yeah he brings scarf latios and that was kind of his downfall but like it was fine, really. It was fine, because at the end, Mega Scissor kind of just won, I'm pretty sure. I want to see the end of the match, actually, because I forgot how the match ended. I mean, I have a general idea, but 
I just want to see. Oh yeah, he did bring Duck Trio. What? What happened to it? <laughs> Yeah, I felt like this match was going to be very, like, very tough for me. <laughs> um, he's stealth wrecked there. I should have superpowered here. No, I didn't. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> CC in the pl yeah, as you can tell, like he was making all the right plays, and I was just, I was just very stressed throughout the entire battle. <laughs> That's it, seven. Yeah, and then this is, I think this is where he switched in the Mega Pidgeot for no reason. Oh, never mind. Yeah, he switched it in for no reason. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna skip some of this. Yeah, see, that thing was scarfed. I'm very glad I brought Roost on this. Yep. Yeah, that's how the match ended. I forgot he brained the trio. Though it makes a lot of sense that he did. But yeah, I was very happy with that match. And... Oh, Jesus. I was very happy with that match. And I had a three win streak. Coming into the fifth week, and the fifth week was against Luke, which I 4 0'd him. It was the not second best, yeah, I think it was like the second best victory of the entire league for me. Uh, ch -ch -ch. there's not much to comment on this match. I mean, there is the first two turns really sucked. Um, I had Charity Berry Raconid, and he sent out, he had Drapion as a lead, I had Raconid as a lead. He rock slided the Raquinid and I got flinched. And the other rock slide was gonna kill me. So I switched into Rakian and his next rock slide crit me. So that was just like really uh But after that, um He switched in Lando on my Trachion. I sword danced for no reason really. And after that I think I sent in Mega is it could be wrong no I sent in Cresselia on it and he earthquaked I'm pretty sure he sent out Drapion I ice beamed the Drapion I sent in Trachion he poison jabbed the Trachion I close combated the Drapion it didn't die surprisingly and then he finished me off with the poison jab because he was banned and then I sent out Mega Scissor, and this is where the match kind of just went to shit for him. Because I sword danced, he went into Lando. Um, he U-turned on the Mega Scissor, it went into Darm, Darmanitan. And I knocked off, and he <laughs> that, um, made the Darmanit that knocked off the Darmanitan choice scarf, and brought him all the way to like 2%. And after that, I kind of just BP'd through a lot of his team, and then I U-turned on his Tangrowth, and Sylveon chipped down pretty much the rest of his team, like he chipped down his Ravombi, breaking any Sash on that. It sh chipped down and killed the Tangrowth, it chipped down the Lando a lot, and at that point, Mega Scissor kind of won with BP. Um, if you want to see the match in its entirety, Winter 3 has the video uploaded on his YouTube channel, him and Jin did commentary on that match, and I was very happy by the result of it. His mons were pretty scary, but I was very happy with that the match ended up with a 4-0. And now, week 6, um, I went against Prologo, and it was a 3-0 on Prologo's part. Now, I'm not salty, but I would have won that match. I'm saying that right now, I would have won that match if it wasn't for a Stone Edge miss. Okay, also, you're seeing the Iron Brock Roselia, and you're probably just like, what the hell is that? 
<laughs> he had a stack attacker that swept my team if it was offensive stack attacker. If it was offensive stack attacker under Trick Room, it kind of swept my team. So what I did was I put Iron Ball on Cresselia. So Gyro Ball only did like, what, 15, 20%. And it was like the best decision of my life. Because like I didn't have to worry about stack attack anymore and luckily he didn't bring the offensive set he bring like a weird stealth rock set um but anyways yeah let's just skip forward a bit Trakion was in on Gyarados and I think I had to like I either had an SD up or a rock polish up I think it was a rock polish and I was going to stone edge the Gyarados but stone edge missed Gyarados knocked out my Trakion and I lost after that. And if you saw the match, you'd probably agree that at that point I kind of won. But Prologo got very lucky. Like I really, I, I don't mean to sound salty here, but I really did just win the match. <laughs> yeah, see, there it was. I lived that. I see, see the Porygon. He was not Scarf Lele, so I won at that point. But I missed. I also don't like how he just kind of screamed afterwards. That didn't make me feel better. Um, yeah, I kind of just won afterwards, but Prologo got very lucky, and I still am kind of salty about that match. But you know what? Things happen, you know. <laughs> Things happen. And that's how that match ended. I like to say that I did outplay Prologo, and I did. I just Lady Luck was not on my side that day, and I that match ended in a 3-0 for Prologo, so that kind of sucked. And yeah, though going over the team real quick: Iron Ball Cresselia for Stack Attacka, HP Fighting Sylveon for Stack Attacka, um, Rock Polish plus Sword Dance. Trakion really did just beat his team. Like, absolutely. I liked Webs against this team. Chandelure was also very good against the team. Same with DD, Coil, uh, Zygarde, but I didn't get to use it. And, I don't know, I didn't really like DD, Coil as a concept, but I bring it because I thought it would be effective, but it really wasn't. But yeah, that was the sixth week, and now it is the seventh and final week. And it, my last match was against Jin, and he 6 0 me. This entire week was kind of just a mishmash of 6 0s and 5 0s. Uh, I mainly lost because of Superior. Like, I let Superior set up a Leaf Storm, went too many Leaf Storms, and he kind of swept me afterwards. Like, there isn't really much to say about the match. Like, I really did misplay, and I should not have let the Superior get that many Leaf Storms up, but I did, and that sucked. So, yeah, that was kind of my fault. Um, there isn't really much to say about the match apart from that. Like, I think the match was like only 10 turns long. And I did misplay a lot. Um, especially with the superior, letting superior get up that many leaf storms and then just sweeping my team afterwards. My main checks were to superior or the Cresselia though I should have brought like a more specially defensive set or a T-Wave set. Um, probably put more special defense if I could, definitely. Mega Scizor, but even then if you carried HP Fire, it was done. Scarf, Rotom Frost, though if he was Scarf himself, then oof. And <laughs> Rindo Berry Roar Mudsteel, just to get it out. This was also to deal with like a Calm Mind Iron Defense. A Calm Mind Iron Defense Reuniclus. So I could roar that out. Though I did not do very well in the match. And I will admit Jin was just the better player. And yeah, Superior just kind of fucked me up. But by the fifth week, I was actually pretty much locked in. Which I was... I didn't realize until the sixth week, I'm pretty sure. Where I didn't realize... I was kind of locked in. <laughs> I was locked in the playoffs, and 
I finished the season fourth in playoffs, which I was happy with. I was just happy I got into playoffs, you know. And now we go into playoffs itself. Now I had to versus Mod. Originally, I was going to versus Meech, but Meech got busy, so we needed a replacement, and Mod was his replacement. And it was three matches because it was it was it was it's, it's a best of three in playoffs, which I find interesting. But all right. So here was my first playoffs team against Mod. Now <laughs> I like using the excuse. No, actually, I think I just modified the week three team. I think I just did that, and that was it. Because this wasn't my week one team, I'm pretty sure. No, it wasn't, because I didn't originally run Custap on Sylveon. <laughs> I, I ran um, Scarf Terrakionia. I don't think I ran Wakonberry. I just ran uh, Liquid Plate. Not Liquid Plate. Splash Plate on that. Requinid. And long story short, I did lose the first match. <laughs> Which I was very surprised about, because I was just like... I was kind of underestimating Mod, really, because I was just like, oh, I'll be fine, it's whatever. But he did beat me, because I like using the excuse that I just woke up from a nap, and I didn't really team build all that much. But after Mod beat me, I think it was like, what, 2-0? I got really serious, like really fucking serious, and I team built for like an hour, over an hour. Um with my second and third team. <laughs> like, this was my second team I used against Mod, and this was my third team I used against Mod, I'm pretty sure. No, 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 no. Yeah, there. <laughs> and with the second match, I think I won, like, 3-0? against mod because I just made a lot of changes so I could not like be beaten by a lot of things and I realized Dragonite was more of a threat than I thought it was going to be <laughs> so that's why I ran Custap Sylveon because like both DD, Dragonite and Mega Gyarados brought me down to around like 20-30% after like either an Iron Head or a fucking um waterfall so custap would activate and i'd get two hits off of them i'd get the first hyper voice and then custap would activate and i'd get the se second hyper voice and kill them and i really like that and that did work out um in like the second match because i was able to like chip the um dragonite enough so i could sd with scissor and kill it with a sword with a bullet punch and um <laughs> it was actually pretty funny because like he flinched my Sylveon and I was just like, okay, yep, fuck my life. And then after that, I just said GG because I thought I was going to lose because <laughs> I was just like really pissed off at that point. But Aragonid actually carried me to the end. Like, hold on. Let me see if I can get the second game up. <laughs> yeah, I let Terrakion... That didn't kill, which made me really mad. Like, that made me super pissed that it didn't kill. <laughs> I switched to that. Got my webs up. Yeah, this is where, it, like, this really pissed me off. I was just scouting for a Z-move at first. Then he iron-headed, and I got flinched, and I just got super mad. <laughs> I at least got that off. I also didn't like how Mod was, like low-key like poking at me just like poking the bear and just trying to piss me off more because <laughs> like in the first match my sylveon did get flinched by um waterfall mega gyarados and for some reason he devastating draked here which was interesting but okay <clears throat> and then i lift anything this gyarados threw out at me and if he did dd'd de de then it was really dumb so i u-turned i killed the gyarados and at this point i was just like whoa wait why does the Rackwinded kind of win? <laughs> so 
So I swapped out into Roserade because I'm because I knew at that point he was like more of a bulky set instead of like a really fast set. So <clears throat> I outsped, I shadow balled it, and then he went into Volcarona. Um, I tried HP rocking here, but he went for the good play and flamethrowered. <clears throat> And then I went into Araquanid, and at this point he didn't have any switch-ins to Araquanid. For some reason he quiver danced here, like for no reason whatsoever, instead of trying to get some chip. Then he went Nido King, and he Thunderbolted, but I had Wakan Berry. So I lived that pretty easily. I knocked out the Nido King, and then after that, uh, he just had the Shuckle left, and at that point I kind of beat it with both my Mega Scizor and my Araquanid. And I was very happy, like at this point, like you'll see my reaction right here. Just <laughs> that was awesome. Like <clears throat> I didn't I didn't realize how much Araquan had fucked up his team once Dragonite um was gone, but it really did like fuck up his team. And that was like the first time Araquan had ever like cleaned up a team, so I was like very surprised by this. And then the last match, it wasn't even close, I'll be honest with you. I think Trakion set up and then what? <laughs> Like, I let Tarak, he let Volcarona, I SD'd, no, I rock slided first, which is fair. <laughs> and I was bluffing the scarf right now, I was bluffing the scarf entirely. <laughs> so I went to Chandelure, uh, he thunder punched me, he went into Shuckle, and at this point, I was just like, okay, he thinks I'm scarf on Tarakion. So, I could just switch in Terrakion right now, and he thinks I'll just regular Rock Slide, and that's it. So, I SD'd here, he toxic, I Rock Slided, and then I Phytinium Z'd the Metagross to make sure it killed. And at this point, everything went downhill for him. I killed the Nato King with Earthquake. I think he sent in Dragonite next. No, he sent in Volcarona. Uh, <clears throat> I rock slided. No, no, I quit. <laughs> I didn't want this thing setting up or anything, so I just CC'd. Since the rule was now completely enforced that you had to mega first turn, I just CC'd for free. I didn't want this thing like having any chance to set up, so that's why I didn't go for the 6-0. And then Sylveon at this point just beat it. <laughs> like, even if he D-danced right now, like, I still beat it. Yep. And yeah, that wasn't even close. That's how I thought the match was going to go first game, but it didn't. So that was on port. But yeah, two games later and I beat mod 2-1 in playoffs. And I was very happy about that. Um, you saw the matches yourself. Um, yeah, Custap, as you saw, did have some uses. Vitinium Z was to mainly knock out the Metagross um, after plus two. And Mega Scissor still had Defog, but I put Sword Dance on it so I could beat the Shuckle. <laughs> I mean, I already beat the Shuckle, but like to beat like a lot of the rest of his Mons. And I'm pretty sure at one point I put like Aerial Ace on it. No, I replaced Aerial Ace with uh, U-turn, I'm pretty sure. As for my last team, I put <clears throat> um, Scarf Track, but I didn't end up using it. Because I knew SD Track would be more useful. So yeah, that was that. And then for the second round of playoffs, it was me versus Windsor. But unfortunately enough, Winder could not do the match, and I ended up getting it the win by forfeit win which really sucked because I was really excited for our match like I knew it was gonna be like a really good match because <clears throat> I already felt really comfortable facing Wender so I knew I could do really well against him but he couldn't do the match because college stuff got in the way high school stuff had gone the way I mean and I won 2-0 forfeit win and that bummed me out but you know stuff happens I'm not mad at him about it like just things happen and then, finally, it was the final round, it was me versus Manny. Manny was undefeated for the entire league, and I wanted to at least take one game off of him. 
and I almost did. In the latter half of the game, I SD'd with Mega Scizor. I love how this music is so fitting with like how I'm giving this like epic speech of just like how I almost beat Manny um, in the first game. Uh, I BP'd, I SD'd with Scizor, and I was starting to clean off his team. And the last two months we both had were Trakion and Mega Scizor while he had his Miltank and his Mega Latios, I'm pretty sure it was. Now, Latios was at 50, Latios was around like 30% while Miltank was at 50%. He had the Latios, Mega Latios in while I had the Mega Scizor. If I had, because the Scizor was also at plus 2 at the time. If I had predicted him going into Multank and went into Terrakion, the game would have been over. Which, let me show you. Uh, I forgot how many turns um, the game lasted, but I think it was like around 100. Uh, go to turn 96, I think it was. No, it went a lot farther than that, Jesus. Yeah, no, 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 wait, wait, I need, I need to show you guys the, oh, okay, I think, oh no, <laughs> yeah, look, I put HP grass on my Mega Scissor for the Quagsire, uh, not crit didn't matter, uh, he did outspeed my Mega Scissor, but thankfully enough, I did not get burned, thankfully, I didn't get burned either time, and then I knocked off, and then I BP'd to finish it off. And at this point, I thought I won, but I knew I wouldn't be able to knock out the Miltank. So Miltank fire punched. Um, he sent in Lati. I set up rocks because I knew he would switch. <laughs> I had a rock winded in. He got kind of a roll, kind of. It was more towards his favor, but still. A Stone Edge Gelati pressuring it. A Stone Edge Gelati again. <laughs> and I just kept on Stone Edging the Lottie. Trying to force him to switch out. But I knew he'd be able to stall out my Stone Edges. <laughs> uh, I should have U-turned at this point. But no, I just Bullet Punched instead. <laughs> I went into Rose Raid. He Fire Punched my Rose Raid. He probably went to Florigus. Oh no. I got some good recovery in. He sent in that. And I just 2 KO'd that really easily. Just really easily. <laughs> Latios roosted. I sludge bombed. I was trying. And I got the poison. Like after so long in the match. I finally got the poison on the Lottie. Where it mattered the most. And I was so hyped. Because I was just like. Oh my god. I can actually beat this. I think I should have just switched in the Mega Scizor, but I understand why I didn't at the same time. <laughs> now see, if if I went Trakion right there, that's it, that would have been game. That would have entirely been game. But I didn't, I did the safe play and BP'd. <laughs> and at that point, I lost. And I was very upset about that. Like extremely upset. And I was just like, ah, damn it. It's <laughs> just, <laughs> 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 protect. <laughs> Like, that was so close, and that had me so hyped. And that game kind of wore me out, in a way. Because in game 2, he just 5 would me, I'm pretty sure. And I don't want to show you guys that much, because nothing really worthwhile happened. I misplayed a lot, and I didn't change up my sets enough. Plus, all and Muck just kind of shit on me. <laughs> so yeah, that was the end. I almost beat Manny. I almost beat the undefeated guy, and I was the closest one to defeating him, because um, I'm pretty sure Jin had like... Manny beat Jin 0-2, and that was like the closest anyone had ever gotten to beating him, I'm pretty sure. And I got close. I got really close. I was one prediction away from beating Manny, but I wasn't able to, and I ended up getting second. But I was really happy with that. You know, I was really happy with the result. I didn't... I didn't know I would've... I didn't know I was gonna make it that far. But I was really happy that I did, and I just had a lot of confidence um, ending the league because I didn't expect to get that far. And I knew it also kind of proved to me that Manny wasn't undefeatable, that he was human, <laughs> and that I could beat him. 
but yeah and that was like the entirety of the BGL season um, I learned a lot honestly I learned how to team build better I learned I actually learned how to deal with stall better ironically because of Manny I also learned how to draft better and how I should draft it improved my team building it improved my drafting skills it honestly just helped me a lot and I think it just made me a better player and a better draft league player and I'm excited for my next draft league which will be the DJL I think it's called um, Jin will be running it and I think there's gonna be around either 8 to 10 players in the DJL I don't think Manny's gonna be in it though I think he is I'm not sure but I am very excited for that season nonetheless and I can't wait to see how it goes, you know? I'm very excited. Um, this was only my second full draft league. This was only my second full draft league. And I did really well. I was very happy with how I did in my second full draft league. <laughs> and... I know I should have like probably recorded my matches and like put it on YouTube, but I was kind of just too lazy. But don't worry, since it is the summer, um, and I have more time when I join my next, the next uh, draft league, I will be posting like my maybe my team builders or more likely my matches to the channel. For all of you guys to see because I think that would be pretty cool and very fun and yeah I think that's just the entirety of the video sorry it lasted so long sorry I rambled on for so much but you know what fuck it you know <laughs> uh, for anyone who's reached this far in the video first of all why do you why do you do this to yourself do you really not have a life <laughs> but thank you I appreciate it uh, Really, as I, as I said before in my first video, I'm just going to be uploading whenever the hell I want. So sorry if I don't upload for like another month, another month or two, but it's fine. Uh, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I will probably be trying to upload more since it is the summer, though God only knows, right? <laughs> I'll probably disappear for a year. <laughs> If you want to see more of me, um, I recommend going to my friend Winder's channel. I will post it in the description below because that's where you'll be seeing kind of more of me because he posts more often than I do and I star in most of his videos. So yeah, we usually just either play Showdown or just do cancerous Discord stuff or just stuff like that, you know? Uh. That's all I really have to say. Have an amazing morning, afternoon, or night. Doesn't matter. I love your face. You're beautiful. And... Uh... <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye.